This week's sponsor, KR Couriers and Transport Limited, are best known as being a Northwest based company who deliver newspapers and magazines for local news agents and superstores. You'll find all the information within the description. Please give them a follow. Thank you. Hello everybody, welcome to the Billy Moore Podcast and today's special guest is Jimmy Sweeney, Irish Jimmy, Irish five Jimmy. times BKB champion, world champion world by champion, the way, yeah. bare knuckle boxing, uh, should have been in six weeks but it's in well, three. Yeah because when we started we, 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 we didn't have the three kilo weight division like in the pro game like we do have now, yeah. so when I was fighting that always, it, it'll be a stone difference. So that's where the three weight divisions come in. I, I fought from, I fought from everywhere for about sixty nine kilos to ninety four. I was a fat shit. Well, like ninety four kilos is a big. Yeah, weight, I was a big. Was you only small, you? Yeah, but when I fought for ninety ninety four kilo one, uh, I fought a guy called Shawnee Carter from from America. He's an ex UFC fighter and whatever he is. Um, so the night before, that were in Coventry. And I, I was I was in the pub down in Double Valkes, where he was training. And I come I come back into the hotel. I was eating a, a McDonald's and I, and I seen him across the across the room skipping. And I said, "Lad, you don't have to worry about weight." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so ninety four. I was a, I was to, to be fair, my boxing skill was good, but I was a complete mess back then. So, yeah. so no, let's a, let's start from the beginning. Then, so let's say I go way back. Tell us a little bit about your journey growing up. Where you're from. What you're about. Oh, I'm from from Irish. I'm a I'm an Irish traveller. Um, born in Dublin, moved to to Sligo. Uh, got uh, ten ten of us, so five five boys, five girls. I've always been been a fighter. My my dad was a fighter. He's he's like when you're a traveller, you're a fighter anyway. So dad's a fighter. My brothers were fighters. So it was always that was always where I was going to end up fighting. So um, yeah, so like. Well, my dad had my dad had a hard life growing growing up, and and I'm gonna get this now because then later on we get into it. Um, my dad was a, a baby. He's his mum. His mum burnt to death in a in a campsite uh, fire in the tent. So his mum burnt to death. His his sisters burnt to death. Uh, he he was saved. Uh, fast forward into a few years later when I was four, my my granddad, his dad was murdered. For a for a, a watch, a uh, guy guy smashed his head in with a cylinder block, so that kind of led to my dad drinking and and mental health problems, yeah. So, but anyway, that's that's then we all we, kids and all that, and, and for we came to England when I was a kid, so we joined a box up there. Um, I won a couple of English titles there. Um, I beat the likes of Andy Lee and stuff like that as a as a kid, and uh, we moved back to Ireland. But uh, unfortunately, things didn't go too well in Ireland for me. As we we'll get on, uh, I was going to go pro boxing, but unfortunately, uh, I I had to go away for a little bit of a time, and and that put into that. So then then I come over here, and I, I met a guy called Jim Freeman, who's who's one of the owners of BKB, and uh, that's where the journey this journey is now. And so uh, I'm I'm delighted that uh, that I've met him, and and I'm I'm able to do what I'm doing. It sounds like you've. Uh, from an early age, you know, going back to your dad's era, mm. you know, he's had a, a traumatic. Uh, yeah, he's was, he was tra- traumatic time because he was he was the he was the second youngest, so he's never knew his mum. Uh, so what it was, it, it, they lived on on uh, on basically outside of the road. So uh, and back them days, they had the, the tent. So it was a candle, and the the candle or something like that set set fire to it. And and my grandmother, like she had all the kids in her, so. She was running in and out of that can of that tent with burning burning plastic come down on top of her to save her kids, uh, and unfortunately she she got the one out, but unfortunately uh, some of my aunts died and she died through through the, the injury she's had. So then de- de- my dad was a kid. No one, him and my other uncle, no one really wanted them. So they were passed from from here to there. So my uncle got into a little bit of trouble. My dad got into a trouble with grump, but mm-hmm. as, as you would. Yeah, well, you're getting passed about loads of rejection. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. Feeling all that abandonment. Yeah, that'd be it'd be a horrible, horrible life. And thank, thank God, I had a, I had good parents, and I, I never went through that. 
See, because as you were telling me, I was thinking, I was putting myself in that position of thinking, wow, yeah, yeah. the feelings that he's going through. So, you dad, like, f- travelling, fighting, you know, do you ever remember, do you, do you recall your first fight? Was fight. it on a campsite? Was it? Nah, I've, like, bare knuckle fight or a real fight, I'm probably just getting battered by, by my brothers. But my first fight, my, my brothers are, are mostly the bare knuckle fighters, not me. Really? My, my my thing was love fighting, but I have an elder brother there and he just absolutely loves it. Like, he, he's he's 40, probably 41 now and he still loves it. Like, mm-hmm. so that was their thing. But I remember, I remember the first fight I had, I, I, I was, I think I was 15, and I fought my cousin actually. And it was just something we were playing games, and he said some some remark about my dad or something, and I just didn't like it. So I said, "Come on, and come, let's let's go out." And he goes, and he said to me, "I'm not going to fight you. You're just a kid." So I turned away, and he punched me. <laughs> so I hit him two or three beds, dropped him, and that was the end of that. So I so from there I knew I'm going to be all right at this. Mm. That's it. So going forward, right? So, but what is this? What sort of propels you into what was the fighting now? Nah, I, I was I was a good fighter as, as a as a kid. What what got me into fight was my dad. My dad loved boxing, and yeah. and I, I was I was good. Like I, I could have been a very very good pro. I was, I was a good amateur, and and the love my dad had for me as because I was kind of the special kid because I was the best at boxing. So that's why I wanted to continue with with, with my love fighting. But unfortunately, this is what happened. Unfortunately, with that. We were back in a place called Mayo, back home, and it's probably the biggest racist place towards travellers that there ever was. So um, there's a guy, there's a guy back there called called Tom Moore, I think his name was. Uh, he whatever went on, he he went into uh, a farmer's um, place, asking him for about a car, and this this farmer had previously been. Being a, a victim of of thefts in his in his places, so he come he come out and and basically attacked his traveller lad and beat him with a, a big stick. Then he took out a shotgun and shot him a couple of times and shot him in the back as he was running away. And then he got him and threw him over the head. So this 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 farmer got done with with um, manslaughter. This was this was actually televised. This was, this was yeah, 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 I remember this. This, yeah, this, yeah. this 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 farmer was was done by well, he got charged with murder. It was put down to manslaughter. Got six years. Appealed that and got out. Said it was self defence. How yeah. can you shoot a guy in the back and be self defence like? So, so there was a big thing going with that, but with, with, like with the travellers and settled people at the time. So I, I was out for my my brother Eddie, his kids, christening, and be, my other. My brother-in-law was there as well, and uh, he won. My brother-in-law asked one one of the guys for for a lighter, and then the guy turned around and said, "We'll do to you what this family did to to the lad." Mm. So it kicked off, it kicked off bad. So, but un- unfortunately for me, it's one of I won't say who, but one of one of the the guys in my crowd had had a Stanley knife, and and we were like we were attacked, but there was about twelve of them. There's only about three, four of us. But unfortunately, two of them got serious stab wounds and stuff like that, which I don't condone, and and you should never use kni- on knives. And um, so as me as me being a boxer, I didn't have to use anything like that. But I was I was blamed for it because affiliated. For, yeah. No, I was blamed for 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 basically I was blamed for the the stab wounds because my the my t-shirt was got on it. And the knife was got, but there was no fingerprints on it. But my T-shirt was there because I took it off. Thinking, What's going on here? But the police then well, we were all we were all arrested, arrested anyway. And the, the police said to me in the in in the watch because they knew when they come raid my house and all that they, they seen all my box and stuff and what it was. So they googled me and, and they knew who it was. So they, they said to me, look, Jimmy said, look, we we know you didn't do it, but we have people saying you did. Yeah. But we know who did. So you can either tell us who did it. Or we're just going to blame you. They said, "Look, you're going to get about. Or you're going. If 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 you tell us who did it, you'll get about eighteen months. You'll be out in about twelve. And I said, "Yeah." And he goes, "I said, what about this? What if I didn't do it and someone else did? What would they be looking at?" They go, "Look, they've got about 15. I said, "Well, uh, I'm not giving nothing. So I'm not saying anything." And I took it, and that's what I got done with. I got seven years for that. Seven years. I got seven years. So that that ruined my boxing thing. But I, I what age was you then, Jimmy? I, w- I was twenty, about twenty three, twenty four. I was just going pro. I was having my life like 
I was in talks with people to turn pro and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, I don't condone violence or stuff like that. But I don't condone ratting people out either, to be yeah. honest. So <laughs> yeah. I just took it on the back and it is what it is. Seven years, though, mate. So where did you shave that seven? I served in Ireland. We got, I got, we got seven years and it's just spending one. Like, my brother got eight years for, for, for that because he, he punched a guy. This guy was about six foot two. My brother's five seven. Yeah. But unfortunately, the guy hit hit a, hit come off a curb or pat and hit his head. My brother got eight years for that. About two weeks before that, this this kid got six years for for killing an old man. My in that year because my because we're travellers, my brother got more for section four assault than people got done for manslaughter. It was un, it's unheard of, like. Do you know what though, right? I mean, the traveling, the traveling communities have had, it's had a bad press, hasn't it, over the years? Yeah, it I mean, has, but look, it's like anything else, there's good and bad and everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? We can't go, oh, we're being, we're being screened up, we're, 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 we're like the victims, victims, victims. Sorry, we're like the victims the whole time because yeah. sometimes we, it's again, yeah, there is bad people, but unfortunately, we're all then tarred the same brush, so. Yeah, and that's, that's, I agree, there's a lot of, you know, there's good and bad and everything, you mm. know, so it's just that the fact that you're kind of stigmatised and that yeah, in, yeah. In, in that community, you know, I've had a few, uh, I've had a few stories, I've been away with a few, you know, I mean, it's bizarre, yeah. uh, you know, <laughs> the, the, the L fighting, the, um, especially the, the Joyce's, the, the Wards, there's a lot of them, a lot of them you know, yeah. that's, that's a that's a, a family name, isn't yeah, it, that's yeah, massive. Joyce, Joyce is a massive name and yeah. Ward's a massive name and so on. It, it, there's all fighters like they're, that's they're, that's what these people are bred for. They're just bred for fighting, like mm, and, yeah. and and the size of most of them are just they're just animals. Yeah. <laughs> See, like Paddy, like Zoc, what's his name? Zoc, is he? Paddy Rory, yeah. Is he the, like the king of the Irish? Nah, there's no there's no king of the Irish. There's no king of the gypsies. There's no such thing as that. Yeah. So what what was that then? Because that was you know the king of the gypsies. You know, nah. How does that it, work? It, there, there isn't. There isn't like. You can't, there's no King of Jersey. What are they going to do? Hold, hold a, a tournament or something like that? <laughs> uh, winner stays on kind of thing. There's yeah. no such thing because every, anyone that says they're King of this, they're always going to get challenges from people. You know what I mean? So if there's good people in every breed. The breeds are what we call like the, the Travis Sweeney's Wars, Joyce. There's good people everywhere. Yeah. But there isn't, there isn't any king. No, there's no king. There's well, no king that's no. settled. We've, yeah, thought, we've, settled, we've, we've, we've settled that. There's no official title of King of Travellers. Like. Yeah, but it's a. Do you know what? It's like a, it's a thing that, especially over here, that the the settled community love to like. They think, oh yeah, it's, it's like a big thing. Oh, there's a king, king of the gypsies, king of this, king of that. There's there's nothing there. So like, let's go. Let's 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 go back to like BKB boy, bare knuckle fighting, eh, boxing. Right. Have you read who's Norman Buckland? Have you read the Norman Buckland? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. What are your thoughts on him? I've not really thought so. I don't. I don't know much of a. It's different, isn't it? So it's, it's like, a different kind. You, 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 you had your Roy, Pretty Boy Show. Right, yeah. let's, let's go back, really. Yeah. Let's go far back, right? Yeah. Pretty Boy Show, Bare Knuckle Fighting. <laughs> uh, Charles, Bron Charles Bronson. <laughs> You've got Pretty Boy Show, uh, Lenny McLean. Do you think these were the predecessors of. They're, they're, nah, like, do, do you know what? They're like. You know, Lenny and all that. Len Lenny was a giant, stead head, just big giants, kind of bully, really. bully, Yeah, but like. Stuff was traveling men out there would have smashed them to bits. Yeah. But they just didn't really want because it's like it's like the bare knuckle here. You don't see many travelers doing over here. You just mm. probably see me. Because they don't really they don't really care about the limelight. So I I just do it because I love doing it. Mm. And and it gives me a platform to talk about mental health and stuff and like that. But most of them don't. It's like Lenny and them, they they love that. They love the attention. They love like if they fought celebrities. Like, but you look at look at Lenny fighting Shaw, Shaw was like a midget compared to him. I yeah. mean if he the come way, up against yeah, if he come up against proper good traveller men, they would have smashed him. Yeah, yeah, you can imagine, couldn't you? You can imagine. So, tell us a little bit about your B, your BKB journey. Oh Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> was actually um, you know, five times world yeah, champion. Yeah, you know that's a that's a that's big I'm, achievement. I'm, it's a massive achievement. It's a massive. I'm I'm probably no problem. I'm, I'm the most decorated BKB fighter in the world, probably in history, um, and all my stuff is. Is there's proof of all my fights? You know what I mean? It's all legit. I'm not. I'm not gonna like. You have Bobby Guns and stuff like that. Send her eighty nine and zero, and but yet you'd find two fights on YouTube or some of them. So yeah. all my stuff is legit. I'm I'm about thirty fights, twenty eight and two, and the two guys that beat me, then I, I come back and smash the two of them. Well, I started. 
I started this in 2016, something like that. But I was I was training for a cousin of mine back home, and uh, my brother-in-law said to me, "Get on, get on this thing here." So I had a look at it and thought, "Come over and just get a couple of easy fights. Just get me into it, the swing of it." So I come over, um, was on the, the 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 drink the night before, flew over, hangover, and fought these two kids, and and I think I punched them. I think one punch each and knocked the two of them out. I mean, so that was a level back then. It wasn't like I was a superman. It was just a level that was crap, to be honest. Yeah. So, but that that started off. Well, honestly, I said, yeah, I like this. So the fight then with my cousin got called off, and uh, one donor of the big big got in contact and said, "Do you want to come back over and uh, we we'll get you we we'll get you another fight?" So I said, "Yeah, I said, no problem at all." So I ended up, ended up moving back over here, just started that, started working away, and it ended up um, yeah doing it full time. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. The most decorated BKB yeah. in history. Yeah. That's a big shout out, yeah. and it's a big statement. I'm all right for an all Irish guy. <laughs> 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 yeah, I fought some good lads, I fought some crap lads, and I, I remember coming over one one time. Like, it, 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 like most of the boys were calling me the George Best of BKB, and that's not really a good thing to be called. Like, mm. so I remember coming over. I was sitting, I was sitting there, I was at home, I was fighting on a Saturday. I was at home in Ireland on a Friday and I had this uh, boxing tournament thing that they needed in, in the town I was from and they needed judges. So I said, yeah, I'll pop down. I said, I said uh, I'll, I'll help out. So I had no intentions of drinking at all when, when I was there. So as soon as I got in, as soon as I sat down, so much, I said, Jimmy, what are you having? And I said, get me a Budweiser. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but that was, so that progressed on and, and uh, the, my, my mate we were in the pub then my mate said Jimmy you gotta go home you're fighting I said don't worry about it don't worry about it it'll be alright but then I forgot to fight I was sitting in a, in a, I was in a house 6 in the morning and you can imagine what I was at 6 in the morning like you know I, mean? I don't condone taking drugs either I don't never do that but that's what I was doing Um. so someone says to me at 6 in the morning he goes Jimmy aren't you fighting today I went oh fuck I am so I had to shoot home Get the my missus at the time drove. I told her some wreck of lies why why I was out so long or something. So we had to fly over then. Still in a heap. The promoter looked at me and goes, "What the fuck happened to you?" I said, "I haven't been to sleep." So I got into the ring, knocked the guy out about thirty seconds, went back on the set. <laughs> it was just a horrible thing, but that's what I was doing. So that's, I never I never took this game serious until a couple of years ago. No. So when you took it seriously, was the payments bigger? The pay, um, well. The time, the first time I took it serious, like I fought this guy called Julian Lane. He was he's an absolute scumbag. This 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 kid robs his mother. I paid this kid because cause I'm I'm actually a decent guy. This this kid had no money for for a house or something, so I give him I give like sent my money over so he could get the deposit for his kids and all that because he was sleeping in his car and he just took crack or whatever he spent that on anyway. But I've I've I remember I won a fight. And then I was on a session about seven weeks. Horrible. Took took two weeks off the session, trained twice for him, went in and got absolutely battered. Cause I didn't I just thought I was gonna win and knock him out. Mm-hmm. This kid left my left me looking like the elephant man. So then after that I thought, fuck this, I'm not taking a beating like that again. I need to try and well, uh, that was that was the first time I took it serious. But the month, like People, people saying, "Look, you make a fortune, big. You won't make a fortune, big, kid, big." I mean, I make the money I make is all right. Mm. I'm, I'm probably the biggest paid fighter in in Britain at the minute. And I, I, well, I'm, obviously, like I've had a five time world mm, champion, mm, BKB, right? But, You're looking at probably the best wages going on, yeah. Yeah, but I can, but just to, like, like I get paid whenever I get paid. I can, I cannot work. But I'm not gonna go buy flashy stuff and all that because it doesn't give you that money. You know what I mean? You still have to work. It's not. It's, unfortunately for me, it's it's BKB has come at a at the wrong time in my life, mm. age wise. But then again, I'm looking and thinking, well, I'm I'm always going to be known as as like, and I'm a legend in the game, an ambassador, and 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 for one of the people that's that's put this put the BKB in the position where people are going to get big money in years to come. So I'll tax them. Mm. <laughs> That's the one. Well, I'm not going to tax them. <laughs> you're, getting, you're getting taxed. So, going forward, right? So, you, you've got the likes of uh, 3D Fight Club now, which is a new one, BKB, yeah. right? So, I've seen, like, like, like 
shout of like 50k getting thrown about nah, it's a lot of money um, that for nah, someone who's it's, it's a novice still, but especially with someone like not. yourself you got f- yeah. your five times like, where, where, do, where are you getting this 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 money to give fighters 50,000 like us unless the boys are taking out of their own pockets and just giving it to them it's not going to happen but tickets wise but like for money like that, you you, you need a TV, t- like you need Sky on, you need you need yeah. proper footage. You can't be like even us were on Fight TV, like that's that's not paying a fortune for to give these boys, like f- fifty grand a fight. Look, how many fights is on? Twelve fights. So, mm. so so what are you looking at? You you know what I mean? If you're giving your top card fifty, what's the bottom on about five? Mm. Where well, you getting this money to pull in this? This is. I mean, but you, you, you obviously what's the what would you get paid for something like that though? I get paid. I can't say what I get paid because I'm under fired. I'm under fired. I knock at the table. <laughs> no, I get paid all right, but mo- most most boys don't. And and to to be fair, everyone should be getting paid decent because it's not it's not like them club fights because it, it it takes a well, lot. You've, you've got fucking YouTubers out there make, making millions. Seriously, seriously, we're fighting yeah. Mayweather. Yeah. Or, or but the only thing is because it because it's such a new sport as well. Yeah, the money's not there because. The, the TV is not there. You know what I mean? If we yeah. run Sky or something like that, that's where the money is. You know what I mean? When they, when they come in, which they will eventually come in, but unfortunately for now... You've got Sounds Boxing now, haven't you? You've got Sounds yeah. Boxing, yeah. you've got, so got MCK. If, if, if anyone says Sky. they want 50, 50 grand for Big Kibbe fighting the UK, it's talking nonsense. Yeah, it's not. So it's, that's just fucking bullshit then. Give yeah. simple. Yeah. So who's, um, who have you been up against that you've really struggled with? Um... <laughs> Round I've, wash. Have you gone the full the distance? Best, I've done. I've gone the full full distance a, a couple of times. Yeah, um, and, you, and you've won. You like I've it. won. I've won. I've beat everyone they put in front of me. I lost twice. The first one, as I said, Julian Lane, the American guy. Uh, what well, happened? Come on, tell me your story. That's the story. I was drinking for seven weeks. I think I slept in, slept for about four days in them seven weeks. Absolutely horrible. Got stopped drink driving, drug driving, the whole lot. Don't do that. That's a horrible thing to do. Um, is this yeah, over here? This is over here, yeah. So this is... So it's just... Because... What was going on for you at the time, you know? He, he, when I won... He, he, like a f- September, I would never fight September because that's, that's my dad's anniversary. My dad, my dad killed himself in 2003, September. He killed himself? Yeah, my dad, because my dad had, had... As I said, from from his... It was what happened to him, so he's always mental health problems. But then he he, he became an alcoholic as well, a fond of drink. So do you believe, right? It was just because you just it's something there like, for me, like that his trauma. He never addressed it. He never, never looked at it. it. He never spoke about it. No. He never shared no. it. No. He never looked for any no. kind of identification, no. and and that's where his that's mental yeah. well being. And then went downhill. Downhill, but then we we moved we moved to um, a house in Sligo which was on the same road as his mum burned to death. So every time he passed that, he was seeing this. Since so that that got him as well. Traumatic. Yeah. So and every like we go back to the fight, and every time, to be honest, September, I take a bad, and I used to go on these mad sessions, like just just try to block everything out. And I'm done for one, but seven seven weeks, and uh, I'm on them guys. I, I'd fight. I, I'd fight whoever, whenever, whatever. I'm on them. I don't. I don't care. So, <clears throat> so decided after seven weeks on a session, I decided, fuck, I gotta train. But I did about two runs. I was just fuck horrible. I come in. I <laughs> just the fact just those few runs is a bit of cardio. <laughs> that was it. You know, but I was still drinking. Yeah. I'd run and then I'd go on the beer. So I come in. I did. I I I was winning the. I got dropped twice, but I was winning the fight. But he won by a point. It's like, <clears throat> you know, you have like on the ten a rule. It was like five rounds, so it's kind of when you get dropped twice, you're like, you're game over. So, yeah, so he he smashed my face in bits on that. Uh, I couldn't that. I didn't know what I was doing for 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 years after because my I was in bits, my brain was all over the place. So, so I said, I'm never getting like that again. So I got I got him on the rematch and I, and I broke my hand going into the fight, and I, and I beat him with just one hand. I schooled him like. Then. My next fight that I lost, I fought a guy called Rico Franco, and <clears throat> that was for for my my lightweight title or featherweight title. Um, I struggled on weight for that one, so I was taking these tablets for lose weight and all that, and I still managed to come in four four and a half kilos overweight the morning of the fight. 
So I sat in the sauna for about an hour, an hour and a half, and it absolutely drained me, absolutely killed me. And in in that fight, I I knew I was in for a, for a, for a long night because I was in the change room and the guy who was doing my corner at the time, like we did a combination on the the pads. And as soon as I did it, only threw like a one two left hook, and I was fucked. Yeah, today, just started sweating. Yeah. I just sat down. I said I'm fucked. But I fin I went into the fight and I was I, I dropped him twice in that. I was winning that fight. And going on as well, was you? I was going, yeah, but I was in bits. I was like an old man. My whole body was like, was that like, you know, when you get like a prune, like shrinking up like that because there's no, there's no water in me. Mm. So when I get punched, I was taking like the full effect of these shots. I thought this kid was the hardest puncher in the world, but I wasn't. It was just, <laughs> it's just because I was so drained. Yeah. But every punch hurt. I was thinking, where's this fella getting this power out of? But he cut me on the left there, as you can see, yeah. and. Because the the blood tends out as well with these tablets I was on. I just you don't water just, tablets, yeah. Yeah, just just to get rid of the, all all the weight. Yeah, know, the excess, I struggle, yeah, yeah, yeah. I struggle. I struggle. I still struggle with my weight, like. So um, and the sixth round in, they they stopped the fight over cut, and I wanted to carry on because I was winning the fight, and I would have beat him, like. So that was that was horrible. That was a horrible feeling because I, I hate I hate losing because I let my dad down because I fight for my dad. That's that's my main reason why I fight it's not for money it's not for anything like that it's for my dad so I can make him proud but every time I lose it's just horrible but I got him then I got him on the rematch a couple of years after but I got him on the best time because we had COVID and even when I fought him the first time I, I was like about like drinking bad and I was, I was taking drugs and all that and I was getting bad but when COVID happened all that I, I got to a point like where I knew like I, I was drinking every day I'm, I'm drinking like 20 bottles a day well like not every day about 6 days a week which is didn't near enough but I was getting like to a point where like I was suicidal and horrible I was getting I was becoming my dad if you know what I mean yeah, I was coming, yeah, coming yeah. there but you're putting your feet in his shoes and yeah, you're stepping in his footsteps I didn't realise on, on how bad it was until like I remember we, we were at a uh, party or something like that and we're back we're back to, when I was in Wales and with, with my, my ex but we were in the house she went to bed about 12-1 because we had to get the kids like 12 o'clock next day and she'd come downstairs at 11, 11 o'clock next morning and I had a bottle of wine in my hand phoned this other one just in my boxers and blood scooting and my nose like that and she said you're, you're an absolute mess and she just said that's it we're done but looking back on it now, like, it, that hit me. That hit me hard. What if the kids come in and see me like that? You yeah. know what I mean? I said, Jimmy, you need to sort yourself out. So I stopped drinking. These are mad of this one story about boxing goes back to this one. I was just going all around. But I, I stopped drinking then. That was it. I just said, boom, stopped. But that was probably like a so bad thing. you believe thing. you had an addiction problem? I did. My addiction was drink. Not not really drugs or anything. Mine mine was drink. Like I was, I was waking up thinking of drink. I wasn't waking up drinking. I was thinking, well, how? Because because she knew. Because she knew I was I was bad with drinking all that. Was you like your bottles and stuff? And no. But what I do you, is was you like, become a secretive? Yeah. I go. I like. I go. Well, how am I gonna get a drink today? So I go. Oh, let's go for food. Like, because I, I remember. When when the watch call was in, the restrictions in Wales, everything was closed at six. Yeah. So I'd get in for like twelve or one and just and like to be like, what do you want to drink? Give me two pints. Give me, you know what I mean. So I was I was thinking, how am I going to get a drink today? When you start thinking, how am I going to get a drink today? You're thinking, you got to know there's a problem here. Yeah, it's you know ways and means to get yeah, more. Yeah, so but I remember um, it's cost me about seven hundred quid a week on food just so I can drink. Like what what I mean, it's cost me a fortune just just so I could drink. But I didn't I didn't care about it because I was getting my drink, so I was happy with that. But I, after that that incident, and I just stopped drinking and and because I suffered bad with mental health as well for years, especially my dad died, and my dad was my best friend, so. It, it, everything just kept going out because like she said, look, we're finished on that, and then about. I think I stopped for two months and then after that I just it just come to, come to come on top because I wasn't suppressing it with drink so I had to deal with it and I couldn't deal with it so and you were raw with it so I, start, with I just started messaging her and said listen I can't do this anymore I love whatever I said I love the kids and 
And she goes, what are you talking about that for? I said, look, I can't do it. So next time I know, my, my, one of my best mates, Harps, is, is at the door, dragging me on to, to see a psychiatrist and that. And the psychiatrist said, look, because I stopped drinking, I couldn't, I couldn't hide my, my mental head feelings, or, so I was coming on top. Mm. So then I was, in, I was in the psychiatrist's office crying, and they put me on these tablets, and, and I've gradually become better. That was about a year and a half ago. But it's the funny thing about fighting, like, I was in maybe on a Thursday, crying to the psychiatrist saying I was going to kill myself. Come Monday morning, I'm in fight camp for a fight. You know what I mean? So this is why I love beer knock as well, because it gave me something. An escape. An escape other to than, do the drinking on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is why I love that. So uh, then when, when obviously we didn't have any shows in, in, in the cause restrictions and all, COVID and all that, but that gave me time to... to, to uh, yeah, I'm battling my, my demons and, and become a better person. I started proper training and I was getting in good shape. And I had this fight in, I don't know where it was, up, up the country somewhere. And I think I think I blasted a kid out in about 10 seconds. How did so you then, battle your demons, Jordan, at times? Yeah, that's a good, this is a good question that, you know, I think the audience would like to, yeah, to hear. Um, well, the, the restriction times, like, for me, for, for me, it was always a case of, I fully believe if my dad didn't, if I was the same way, if my dad was still alive and he didn't commit suicide, I probably would have because obviously I didn't. But when my dad did it, I lived through that. I've seen the hurt that it's caused my family. How, was you, how old was your dad when he done that? He was 42. He was only no age. Yeah, so I, I was 19. My, my little sister was like six. You know what I mean? Um, so I've I've seen... I've seen the, 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 the devastation it causes and and a lot of people if they seen it they wouldn't do it but I, that's why that's the only thing that saved me because I knew I couldn't put my family through that I couldn't like because of what you the experience what I, that you've I've been through yeah but if it, it come to a point where, where I was gonna because I thought there's no way out of this there's no yeah. what do I do what like I felt like I was alone and felt like there was no one there for me but in them situations, you, you feel like that, but you don't realise there, there is people there. There's always someone there. Like, there's always someone that needs you, like whether your parents or anything. There's always someone that, loves that, you. Need, that loves you and and do anything for you and they're there for you. But when you're in, in situations like that, you always feel like you're on your own. But when, when <clears throat> back to the Rico one, but when, when, I, when I've gone through all that and I, I fought him the second time, uh, I absolutely punished that kid. Like I dropped him about four times, destroyed him, and but it come to a point in the fight <coughs> where I felt sorry for him, and I remember the last round and I knocked him and I, and I begged his corner to take him out, because this kid was going through punishment. Like, yeah. and they turned around and said to me, "No, don't worry about him. He'll come back." So I just said, "Will he?" So when he got up, then I dropped him again and they took him out. But that one, like with <coughs> cor- that, there his cornerman should have taken him out when he after when I dropped him the first time, he went back to his corner and said. Is that it? Is this the seventh round? They should have took him out there. Why yeah, put, why put him through? He was confused, didn't he? He was confused. When the last time I took him out, like that one extra shot could have killed the kid. It's bare knuckle. Mm. You know what I mean? They should have took him out. But I was glad, obviously I'm, I'm glad to get the, the victory back. And uh, I, I'm put that that was really, it's one of them things that's kind of like, it was icing the cake that year because after everything I've been through and, and thought I wasn't there to come back and claim my title, that was just a massive thing for me. Mm-hmm. What the hardest fight I've probably ever had was Edgar Perrette. Uh, he's he's a Mexican lad. He was ex WBC silver belt champion. Uh, nine weeks nine weeks before before that fight, I was in Wales in in um, swim pool par, and my ex said to me. Jimmy, you're fatter now than what you were against Tony Carter. Mm. And I probably was because I was 95 kilos or something like that coming to camp. And I had to get down to 72 in, in nine weeks. So that absolutely destroyed me. But I, f- I fought him and I thought, yeah, I'm a bigger lad. I'm going to bonk on bonk. I'm going to knock this kid out. So within two rounds, try to... Try that's, to like fucking, that's like 20 fucking three Kilos, kilos, sorry, yeah, about 40, 40, 50 pounds. Fuck, or something that's like that. only three kilos in that time, nine weeks. Yeah, like, that was that was the, just over three yeah, months to get yeah, rid of that. That was a struggle. I remember I come, I come down, I come down to the camp, and uh, the guy wanted to jump on that, so I took all the towel, clothes off, and I was like, Fucking Jimmy, why do you do this to yourself? <laughs> <laughs> I said, 
said, I, I love eating, I love drinking. So, but I managed to lose the weight. And I'm, I thought, yeah, I'm going to knock this kid out because I was a bigger lad. Uh, but in the third round in, he just came out and he, he just like dumped me to the left hand and just hit me this right hand over the top, which I didn't see. But it's like me sitting here talking to you. That's what I was at home with my ex. I was at home with my ex watching a movie and I said, this is a crap movie. Mm. But this, this guy, it's just like this image kept flickering. My head, flickering and I was thinking, what the fuck is that? Then I was like, that. I said, oh, Jesus, I'm in a fight. <laughs> but I got up then and dropped him twice. I won that, but that's probably my hardest fight. He was at, like every time I'd hit that kid, he'd just look at me thinking, oh, this, this guy's trying to kill me. So I just run like, fuck. You could take a day, could he, yeah? He could take it, he could give one as well because he had a he had a steel thing in his hand, didn't he? Because he broke his hand or something. I didn't know at the time. But he could he could take but if if I fought him at, at my natural weight, I wouldn't I would have knocked him up because yeah. You're a bit heavier. I, I yeah, because I had to drop the seventy I fight a seventy six, so I had to drop the seventy two. I'm too old for that. So but as I said, I'm I'm one of these guys like if, if it's a big fight at seventy two I'll drop down. But I'm not I don't do that anymore. But I was daft because it took it takes too much out of you. Does, you're just yeah. giving people like you're giving them an extra little advantage on 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 like there's no one in, in me fit it's like my next fight. I'm fighting seventy eight. There's no one in my weight or seventy eight that's gonna put put up a fight against me. But when I drop down down weights I'm I'm giving them a chance. Yeah. There's no point doing that. So as what you you will titles Tell us about winning them, come on. The feelings you were going through. My first, do you know, do you know honestly, the first the first ones were, I won them, I didn't really care. It's not like, because I didn't take the game serious and all that, I just thought I was just beating people up and because it was more, more into my drinking and all that. But then, my last couple, the ones that I lost and I come back and grabbed, they're the ones that meant more to me. Because, no disrespect to BKB, but at at the, at the time it was just starting off, so it wasn't like a case of being a, a world champion professional fighter where you, you win that and you're like you, you've accomplished something massive. Mm. To me, it was I just beat some pub fighters and all that. You know what I mean? And like I'm I'm I would have been a very very good pro as I said. I beat like Sandy Lee and and Spike O'Sullivan as amateurs, and so to me it was just it was just beating people up. But when once, once the the level went up. And and there's actually good people competing. Then when I won my like fourth, third, fourth, whatever it was, then that's when I thought, yeah, this is this is a good feeling. This like this is I'm actually achieving something now. Whereas mm. before, as I said, no disrespect, I was beating pub fighters, mm. and that to me was just like yeah. But for years, like you were fighting with gloves on, weren't you? So you, yeah. You, you obviously, yeah. What 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 what? Why did you want to go into? The bare knuckle. Tell us about bare knuckle. What is actually bare knuckle? Is it actually this? Yeah, it's it's. The, but look, it's it's to me. It's more natural for me to fight bare knuckle than what is gloves because yeah. I'm a traveller. It's what we've always done. It's like I remember in, in campsites as kids, you'd be just battering the shit of kids, and they'd be battering you. So it was no, one's had gloves on. no one's had <laughs> gloves on. It's just I think that's that, what we did. Like so, it was just natural from like these boys coming now. Like I'm. Like this is why no one in this game is going to be as good as me because it's not natural to them. Yeah. This is a natural thing to me, and it's just. It was a natural thing to me growing up as well because most of my fights, you know, were in school or in prisons or on the streets, and they were never. We we're not going to stop to put a pair of gloves on. Yeah, yeah. I it's think just, there was one you, time you know, you're not walking around with the gloves on your I shoulder. Think there was one time Jimmy Rice and I shared this night. I was in Bristol. I was about six months clean. I'd been battling my own addiction, right? And I was in a sauna, and this fella. Big crazy moustache, just sort of through the steam, walked towards me as I was sitting down in the steam room and said, Let my friend, you like the box? What the fuck's going on? He threw it on my toes here. He's, yeah. he just stands on for this. And, you know, just the ego went, yeah. He said, I fight you. And I was like, okay. Next episode, we've got we've arranged this fight. And it was, um, me mate John, John, he'll tell you this. He, we arranged this fight. Well, it was on a Sunday afternoon and it was in Bristol. It was on a, it was, I, to me, I thought it was in a gym. Yeah. Right? I found out it, it was in a, a gym. No, it wasn't in a gym. <laughs> it was in a, a fucking kid's park. Oh, Jesus. Well, there was still kids swinging on the monkey bars, oh, throwing bottles. They were just fed all the kids at the time. This big bouncer with a big cashmere jacket yeah, on, big fucking. Was that here in, in Liverpool? No, I was in, um, it was up in Bristol. Wow. And I'm standing there and I'm fucking full of fear. You know what I mean? I'm clean, right? 
put it put his rug in me, you know, like you know, like you said before. Yeah, you yeah, skate, didn't really care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Didn't care in the yeah. world. But I'm I'm like six months abstinent from everything, so it's yeah. like this is new to me, you know, going into this kind of arena, and with that with that mindset, and this kid is standing in front of me. And I've got a big crowd of friends that are saying, look, I've sold one person who sold everyone. No, oh, I tell you what, what have I done here? And they're all saying, and oh, come on, Kid Biscuit, my nickname was. I don't know where that come from. You do, go yeah, on, go on. Mean, on. Mean, <laughs> mean, kid Cracker, Kid Biscuit. But I said, yeah, I looked at this kid and I thought, he pulled out gloves. So it wasn't bare knuckle, right? Yeah. So we said, there's a pair of gloves there. Better, better, put a pair of gloves on. And I thought, what the fuck am I doing no, in a park on a Sunday afternoon? Fighting this big bouncer, and um, I battered him. I fucking yeah. put him to keep. But the only reason, Jim, and I'll say this right, the only reason I did that was because I was so fucking scared that if I didn't, yeah, you right, would have kept going. I. He would have fucking annihilated me. And the shame, not the, the the beating. I could take the beating. I could take beatings all day. Yeah, yeah. It's a shame on me. The now. shame of getting battered and all the lads there. Watch it. Yeah, that's worse. The that's, that's the worst. Going, yeah. Oh, well, you fucking let us down here and that going through that no. you know so they were the kind of fucking things I got up to I mean obviously you know there's a lot of like yourself there was a lot of street fights and I won some you lost some and that was it he's bit off to him you know there's no bare knuckle fucking boxing no, no. when you're getting your ear no, bit no, off no, 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 you're getting, all the rules are gone yeah, the happens. rules are gone there's, see the street fighting we had when you were biting fucking ears and f- there was a lot of that going on so yeah, it was shit. Body parts were getting bitten off. <laughs> I've done that. Unfortunately, I've done that. Just, but unfortunately, like, that's like that's part and parcel of outside fighting. Man, it's not. There's no rules. I've, I've mm-hmm. learned that like when I was young. Like because when I when you drink, when I when I fought outside, I'd, I'd always like put the hands up and someone give me a kick. One and I'd oh, fuck it. Man, there's no rules here. Yeah. So then people try to bite me and gouge my eyes out, and I beat them and stuff. It just everything just goes up, which I don't condone that either. But it's, no. when you're in situations like that, you just gotta defend yeah, yourself. Huh? You know, everyone, everyone used to want to get everyone in a headlock when I was a yeah, kid. You know, yeah. it was like, they were always trying to wrestle get, you. Because I, I was a fighter, I, was, I used to always get another fight and to be to be three or four guys trying to jump me and be able to try to poke my eyes out and stuff mm, like that. Yeah, there a few of them. Yeah, yeah. so was, but that's the worst thing. Like, I could never like go for someone's eyes and try to poke their eyes. I was thinking it's always a horrible thing like I got fronted by three scouts and I don't you know they watch this but you know who they are and they're out there and I was in Ridgely you know what I mean and um, it just come it just I just come to a point where I wasn't taking any more fucking shit off these yeah, kids yeah. and I fronted one of them and it, there was three of them then and do you know what I'll stand on with three years yeah. you know and I, and I gave it a good as it got I got fucking battered <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Give us good guy. I got battered. <laughs> I got battered, Jim. You know what I mean? But I fucking, you know, you you're overwhelmed, aren't you? Yeah. You know, yeah. you're fighting. It's not like a kung fu movie where no, you. No, it's not. So as soon as you look, as soon as you get hit in the side of the head, and you look like you're thinking. I'm fighting him. I've got him like yeah. that. I'm fighting. But then you're really, yeah. he's, he's, yeah, he's biting me here. This other kid. It's just fucking yeah, bizarre. The adrenaline. Because then you realise, oh fuck. I'm I'll go for it. Like I'll yeah, go for yeah. it. But at, you know, at the end of the day, you, you know, you're not gonna win any wars. You know, you could get lucky and just fucking bang the three of them. Yeah, but it when just you, doesn't really happen like that. No, <laughs> when, you, when you're back against the wall, it's a bit different. But yeah, I mean, I'm glad I'm not involved in that kind of stuff yeah. no more. I, I've seen it. Of course. And I see a lot of it going on on these social media that's the worst. That's the, that's the worst thing about it, because most of them are doing it, and they're, they're doing it for social media. Yeah. Like, they're just trying to get, I don't know if they're trying to get Instagram famous or Facebook famous or something, just for 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 this crap. Yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot that's, doing it for the, the fame well, that, I find it just keep, it keeps things going as well all this like whatsapp videos and like travellers are the worst man because I get sent about 400 whatsapp videos every, every day and it's just like what's the point of it like you just calling these, you out these, or calling not, not calling me I, I, thankfully I've, no, no one's called me out and like I do my thing and and everyone knows I do my thing and they do theirs my, my thing is not an out, out street Bearing up on the streets and all that, like the, my thing is in the ring, professionalized. But I see travelers doing it, and most of them are just sending videos to each other. Like they're not fighting; no. they're just Shouting, sending fighting. videos. Like <laughs> I'm thinking, what are you doing I've this seen, for? I've for seen, views, like I've seen that. Where yeah, do you like, go? You get down here now, and I'll yeah, yeah, you yeah. for fucking this. No, no, they didn't. And then they don't come down. No, 
Well, ten, <laughs> ten WhatsApps. Ten grand on this I'm right thinking, now. I'm thinking, why didn't you just ring them, mate? Yeah. You know what I mean? Just ring them and just get it done. Yeah, it's, it's a fucking different story when they're starting, like, you're washing your dirty laundry in public. Yeah, yeah that's what they do, man. It's like, oh, she man, had a so mate, my fun. mate, Danny Christie, big shout out to Danny, big fan of yours, Danny. Yeah, I see him. Um, he messaged me. Oh, Danny's, yeah, Danny's, um, Danny was shitting in that chair that you're shitting, and he had a, 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 beat, a bit enough of boxing match with Decker Heggy, yeah. uh, which was fucking, uh, it went far. I did, yeah, I seen that, I was, it was a decent, it's a decent, decent fight there, it's like, I don't know why he went into a small ring with a, a bigger, bigger guy, because he's a unit, thing. like, the, the Decker, he is, he's a big lad, he's a big lad, no. But then he's like no, an ornament, isn't he? Because yeah, when you the big he's, he's, he's not the greatest. He's not, good for, he's not He's not the greatest, but he's just a big lad. So like, if obviously if Danny fought him in a bigger ring, and all right, I just want to batter him. Yeah. But there's some good punches in Danny. To be honest, I enjoyed that fight. It's only Danny. Danny Fox that likes it. Uh, Joe Shelke. Joe beats him like. But he yeah, may, he's he a, you can you can tell by him he has boxing. He's, good boxing, he's boxing. He's boxing skills, but he's also on a bit of BKB in yeah. the past. I've, yeah, yeah, he has. Yeah. He's done some. I've seen his. Um, when I went up to Carlisle, I've seen a few posters that he had. So, oh, he's from the same same town as Dick Gary. He's from the same place, are Yeah. So he's, um, he's, I think there's something going on now. With, with, was it Dean Lynch Ward? Dean, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a, he's a feral cousin of mine, I believe. He's, he messes with yours? Cousin yeah, yours? something to do with... with all travellers are related. <laughs> All travellers are related. So he's he's messy. I don't um I don't know him, but obviously a cousin. So he's 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 reached out for some sparring, and yeah. I will help him out. He's fighting Deck, and yeah, and, uh, that's the next fight. Isn't yeah, it? I don't I know what the date is. I wish him I wish him all the all the luck in the world. But, 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 do you think the weight the weight's similar? Do you feel? What do you mean? The weight the, the weight difference because I mean when when oh, Danny it? went into the fight with Decker. Yeah, but Decker. I don't I don't know I don't know Dean's I don't know what weight Dean's at. I don't no, know. I don't know idea, don't, no. Yeah, I don't know. But, but I believe like, he's lost a bit of weight and he's he's looking leaner, he's looking fitter. I've seen him on the pads. Yeah, but, but you're bringing like this is the thing as well. Bare knuckle now what we're doing it is is a professional sport. Yeah. But you're taken away from that when you when you guys go and fight another guys like stone, two stone, three stone heavy. That's not it's not prof- we're trying to get this obviously there's still a stigma to attach to the, the bare knuckle and still a lot of people don't want to see it. So every negative is gonna help these people to, to get our, our our sport like banned or whatever. So yeah. and you're giving them you're giving them ammunition when you're having guys going in like fighting guys three stone heavy it's not, it's not professional like so that's I don't I don't like all that. No, I, I agree because the the weight advantage alone yeah, you're gonna right, struggle. Yeah. Like and I've always thought like the smaller you are, right? If I got into someone small like yourself, you'd be like a little whipper to me. Ba, 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 ba. Right, so I'm I'm just, just don't go there. <laughs> I'm bigger. You with yeah, me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I'd have to kind of get. Yeah. I'd have to yeah, use to my weight. Right, yeah. I'd have to get you in the corner. So yeah, but, yeah, but this, this oh. is why this is why we got weight divisions. You yeah. know, this is why we got, you fight you fight in your weight division. That's why we have these things. That's why there's rules in place for the sport. But when you're when you're not putting these rules in place, you're, you're taking away from it. I'm still fast, old Jim. I'm not saying the, you're not. I think for the big, <laughs> I think for the big, for the big hombre, mate, I'm we'll still have, fast. We'll have to get some sparring. We'll have to, you, mate. I love it. <laughs> but I think it gas a bit too quick to be body, fair. I'll be letting them body shots in the fast. So. <laughs> 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 yeah, so we got what you call it as well. If anyone's interested in tickets, um, you get get at me on Facebook or, or Instagram. We, we've a, a massive show coming up April 10th. Um, I'm fighting a guy called Barry Jones. I'm fighting him for for one of my one of my titles. My, my title got is for the seventy eight seventy nine kilo title, but that got stripped off me because I think I had about three bets at one time, and you have six months to defend it. Yeah. So they kind of took it off me without telling me they took it off me, kind of thing. You got so six months to defend it. Defend it, but yeah. And then I seen I seen someone else. I, I, I had my belt, yeah, like <laughs> it's mine not there. So then then the promoter announced this fight and against. Um, Guy called Conor Tierney and James Canelli. I was thinking, what the fuck is going on here? That's my belt. So I rang him up and he goes, You haven't defended it, I took it off you. I said, Why didn't you tell me? Because you got you be your drama queen about it. Yeah. I said, Right, fair enough, I said, but I want I want I want that like time. So uh Conor Tierney didn't his he's left us, he's going to America and that was all the best. And then it's come come vacant. So I'm fighting Barry Jones for for dad. And I'm also fighting That's the tenth of the, April. Tenth of April, but I'm also fighting him for the police gazette. Uh, American world, world title as well, and uh, they've just been on to me yesterday. They're, they're inducted me into the the 
the bare knuckle hall of fame over there in July second. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get out to that. So that's a massive achievement as well. Incredible so, achievement. Yeah, achievement. Yes, incredible achievement for no, for for, little, for for an Irish guy to come over and do and do what I've done on this this board is 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 amazing. That's, is that your nickname, Irish Jimmy? No, the Celtic Warrior, no, the Celtic Warrior. Joe Brown gave me the Celtic that. Warrior. Celtic Warrior, yeah. So I think he was a bit of a Steve Collins fan or something. <laughs> You've got the like like the Shamrock expression. Yeah, no, oh, Celtic yeah, Warrior. Yeah, it wasn't really like a, I, I remember like. Put up a put up a post about like nicknames and all that, and then you come down thinking it's not really original. Is it? As soon as you get an Irish for it, you put a call him the Celtic Warrior, like, yeah. but it's stuck. That was decent now. So that's your nickname, the Celtic Warrior. Yeah. The, 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 yeah, the, 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 the 10th of April 10th of April two of so, wait, so can you get the tickets can you get them online you can get them online or, or mess, yeah you get them online um, well, I'll put them all in the description you yeah, send me a link yeah, to I'll, send, I'll, I'll send you a link all, yeah, you, get yeah. It, you get it on the comments so I'll send you the link over but I'll send my code as well Jay Sweeney and just put that because then it comes on the, the, the amount of tickets I've sold through that you know what I mean so it's all it all, so all goes I, yeah. towards the kids so what I'll do on, on the in the description box within the podcast, there'll be your link My with your link code, on. yeah, all your Insta details, your social yeah. media platform details, yeah. Yeah. all them links will be going yeah. to that. And if yeah. anyone, if anyone's suffering, suffering mental health problems, or you want just a little chat or anything like that, you'll always get me on on in, inbox me. Don't be ringing me. Don't be, unless it's like well, I have people ringing me up for the most after things. So just if you're going through a bad time, give me a shout on and and, and I'll I'll ring you. That's really admirable of you. I mean, I, I I agree, Jim. I get a lot of messages, you know, from my TMs and that. Uh, and sometimes it, the message, the inbox is overwhelming. Yeah, it's overwhelming. Yeah. But uh, I get a lot of people just ringing, just like just, just like I'm with with family and all that, just FaceTime me and just being being daft. So but just, you don't just, know. I don't know these people. You know, you know what I mean. It's, I'm not being being bad or anything, but I'm not going to answer like video calls to people. I don't I don't know. So give me a little message. Tell me what's going on, and then then I'll ring you and we'll have a chat. So have you have you been coping with your mental health? I'm, do you know what? I've I've come these off. Days. I've come off the these these temperatures, and I'm going I'm going down the road of of natural health stuff. So my brother is one of these, uh, and me 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 good pal Ali Morris. So these these people are into all this, like ancient healing stuff. So I'm going down that road to be as naturally that the Cambo stuff. Yeah, or he's he's doing the whole. Um, He's the instructor Frog course or whatever. Yeah, he's yeah, doing yeah. the course up here for and all that. But he's on this shellac stuff and, and microdosing and all this kind of natural stuff. And and I'm giving that a go because with 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 the depression tablets, you, you get addicted to them. Unfortunately, yeah. addicted. And then it's like, as soon as you're like a wafer there too, you think, oh, I need it, I need it, I need it. And I'm finding that. I don't... So I don't what? want. I don't want to go out of one addiction and into another addiction. You yeah. know what I mean. So, so but I mean, I'm in such. I'm in such a such a good place now. My mentally, everything is just life is just so much better for me now. So I'm, well, not, I'm, I'm not, not a happy I, I, place. I won't take it away for the fact that people need medication. You know, no, I, I understand that and completely. No. I I I needed it and it's helped me. But with my own person thing is, my my dad killed himself using yeah. these yeah tablets. So. It he saved them up and just just took them on and killed himself. So I'm thinking this is what killed my dad. So I don't yeah. really want to be. I know they've helped me, but I'm I'm gonna try to do it naturally. But people, I totally understand. People do need them, and it's helping them. If, and few one them people continue taking them. I see. My the experience I had was when I was in jail a long time ago, and I couldn't cope with the reality, and I couldn't face yeah. life on life's terms, and. You know, I was heavily, massively in addiction. So, you know, I was a, I was in a narcotic stupor for most of my life um, at a young age, and I was given I was given different tablets to try and like address my mental well being. Mm. But the reality was, there was nothing wrong with me, right? There was nothing wrong. It was just that me, me thinking was a bit skewed. Yeah, yeah. I had a lot of uninvited thoughts coming through the back door of my mind, and they tell me that I was shit, and my self esteem it Been affected gone, me, yeah. and my confidence was low. So I believed in my own thinking, right? So the tablets, what when I was given medication at that point, the tablets, what they were doing was clouding my judgment. Mm. It was like it was like it was horrible. Mm. It was but you were, you want to believe these tablets were working so bad as well? And yeah, just... and, and I got to a stage where. It took me to climbing on a prison roof, Jimmy. Right, this is what happens. Right, I had I had them that much. Right, I was taking them and I was walking around like a zombie. Right, just just drifting through the prison system with a fucking with a hole in my soul, just burn right out. 
And I remember thinking, fuck, I've got to stop, I've got to get off this, I don't know what to do. And there was an opportunity, and he climbed on the roof, and I thought, I'm getting up there. Right, there's loads of, oh, this is it, this is my fucking quest for help. Yeah, the minute I got up there, and I went tits up, and I went down a block, and I was in celebration, I took, took, took away the medication. I haven't had nothing since, in yeah. that sense. Um, that's going over, like, what? Maybe 15 years ago, yeah. if not 17, 17 years and ago. How are you now on a good like Now, yeah, it's like I either get busy living, Jimmy, or I get busy dying, yeah, or I get sure, busy yeah. thinking about yeah, living, yeah. or I get busy it's thinking like, about dying. Like it's like like positive attitude as well. It's a massive thing. If you're if you're if you're doing a little couple of little things, any little thing like doing a day, little, something positive, something. No, you know what I mean. Mm. And, you, and you get into your head, then everything is just positive. Life is positive. Yeah. So it's just kind of like how what you're thinking as well. But like if you're in a place bad and you're around people, like bad things happen and stuff, you're you're gonna be in that yeah. that that it's depressed. Yeah. Like that. so, you need to just kind of like even just little walks out or as long as you're doing something every day, just something. Yeah. So for me, going to the gym is something that I do regular. Right. Mm. It that. Gotta that, be that yeah. combat. Yeah, that's like me as well. I've mental health. I've 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 like I've left one addiction to another one. My new addiction is training. But it's, it's, you know, it's not is, a bad one though, is it? Not a bad one. <laughs> I, like, but I can't. Like, you know, if I don't, if I miss it now, I'm like, oh. But it is. But, but then see, see now, right? I've been to them places, Jimmy. Right, where you know, if you miss it, you f- you your whole mm. mind and body feels it, right? Yeah. So. You're obsessed over it. Yeah, oh, yeah, I should have done that. And then I'm going to lose a bit of weight. I'm going to lose a bit of fitness. I'm going to put a bit of. I've had that going on. Now I just go fuck it. Not yeah. asked. Right. We're blessed with a few short decades. Yeah. We're lucky to be here. But, but I. Some of us for, anyway, for me, it's because because I'm fighting. Because I'm because I'm fighting. It's, it's I can't miss it. But once I start fighting, I'm just going to get fat. I'm still going to go to gym, but I'm not going to over over obsess with. with Missing sessions and all that because life is well, just life get is fat not, with me, lad. Just get fat because <laughs> life life is for living. You know, like just enjoy it. Obviously, keep fit, but don't don't over obsess with about fitness or how you look. As long as you're healthy and happy in yourself, that's all that matters, isn't it? Yeah, well, for me, right, and I, I suppose it's for a lot of people who are in the same situation or have been in the same situation. You well. it was addiction. Now, take away the drugs. Now, you've got to live life on life terms without, yeah, yeah, without yeah. suppressing your feelings, right? Yeah. You've got to go through struggles without going, okay, I need to think, I need a drug. Yeah. I'm going to I'm gonna bury that for a, for a short while. That's not the solution. That's just the problem yeah. on top of, right, the problem that you've already got. Now, for me, it's almost five years, give or take, where I haven't had nothing, right? I've had to go through a lot in them yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The shame, the yeah. guilt. You have to deal with it, and you kind of, yeah. but once you deal with it, and you know you've dealt with it properly because a lot of for me it was like something would come up and, and I'd go on a session and think yeah that's me dealing with it but it wasn't me dealing with it because that still didn't go away no that was still there you're that still there yeah there. and that's but that's I was just it was just I was just getting getting the place where I was just shutting that out but once you're off everything and you you actually go oh yeah let me deal with that now and deal with it that's when you feel a lot better in yourself because it's dealt with it's sometimes it's hard to deal with these things. Don't get me wrong, but yeah. once it's done and once you push through and deal with it, how I dealt with it, Jimmy, right, was writing, right. So writ. So obviously, I've got two books, two autobiographies, right. The first one was about my experience. I must get one of them. I'll get you one, Jim. The first one was about my experience growing up in the prisons and, and the system. The second one's probably the same, but it's more about like how I dealt with. I'm definitely dealt. How yeah. I dealt with life, you know, the mental health, the mental well-being, yeah. the depression. Yeah. The, the, the relationship because it was yeah. relationship get, get anyone suffering like that get yeah. on get on books like that because they, they really help you like even even people our who, journeys people on right like our journeys my journey your journey people can take pauses from that yeah. and it helps them as well it's and, also, it's and a lot of what we've gone through with a lot of people are going through that and they don't know how to deal with that so they could be just reading your book and go oh this is what i did yeah. let me try that it means it's so a lot of people take pauses from that so if you want if, Get on these these books. What's the name of the book? It's called a, it's a Prayer Before Dawn of Fighting for Your Life. Both of them are in, 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 will be in the description. But the reality is, right, Jim, right, it's about perseverance. It's about turning up. I know you struggle, right? Look, people do struggle. I'm not here to, like, come on, mate. It's like, get a grip, right? Get a hold of something and speak about it. Yeah, yeah. Isolation, separation and, and, and leads to fucking desperation. And when desperation, you're going to do some crazy things. Your dad lost his life because he never saw it. My talk, dad yeah. drank himself almost to death. He died, right, lonely. He had his family around him at, his, at the end, right, but for years and years, Jimmy, he drank, he drank. Right, yeah, yeah. So and he had lots going on because if, for him to beat up 
his son, he was only a child like myself, and, mm. and, and, and take it out on me for no reason other than I don't know what. There's got there's something, going, there's yeah. something going on for him. He never spoke about it, and I forgive him for that. Um, however, I always wish that he he talked about it. Yeah, but that the, but the thing the thing as well though is they've 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 grew up in a they've completely like different yeah. era than us where they don't talk about things like that. And like it's only it's only recently where my like, minutes come out and talked about these things yourself myself. Back then, like my, my dad would never talk about this, especially being a traveller. This is one thing like travellers don't because it's it's weak to talk about these things. But you'd rather go and kill yourself and leave leave your family mm-hmm. to deal with all this than to stand and say, "But it's not a, weak. a weak man. No. I just need help." And for anyone out there, so you travellers as well, you were not weak talking about things you're going through or depression and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Your families love you. You, you need to be there. So just talk. So one thing, one thing you're not is weak. You're actually stronger talking about these things than what you think. Brilliant, Jimmy. Brilliant. That was a brilliant way of putting it. There's a lot of. It takes a lot of courage mm. to be honest. When, you know, when I when I was going through to my my thing on that, the hardest thing that I found was that initial step of saying, not just saying to me, but actually talking, saying to someone, I have a problem here. Yeah. And once I did that. It was like a weight lift on my shoulders and I could deal with it then. It's like the floodgates open, I, I could get all my emotions out and I could deal with it. But it was just that first initial, I need help. That was the key to, to mind. That's the hardest part. Yeah. Brilliant, Jimmy. So we're coming to the end, right, of the podcast, Jim. And at the end of every podcast, they always ask the guest for a pearl of wisdom. Right, so what would you say... So a young Jimmy Sweeney coming through the doors of life. If you had the chance now to say something to you as a younger age. Don't, don't, don't do what I did. <laughs> <laughs> no, listen, enjoy your life. Be happy with your life. Love everyone around you. And f- my main thing is if you're feeling bad or anything like that, speak up. Speak to a friend. Speak. More, most people find talking to a stranger easier than talking to family. So... Look, my my phone is always open. My inbox is always open. Just just speak about it. But enjoy life and, and enjoy your family. Thank you, Jimmy. And with that, nice one. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.